Hello and welcome my friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and watching this video. This is going to be my group reading in celebration of the full flower moon. Now in May we are blessed with another super moon. The full flower moon is an amazing moon of emerging pieces and aspects within our lives those budding pieces that are going to flower and flourish as the spring starts to transition into summer. Now, like I said, this is a super moon, so it's going to feel even more amazing. The moon will feel and look larger than it is in other months. Now, we've been really blessed with a lot of super moons over the last couple of months. This is the last super moon for the year so it's really important that we utilize, embrace, and incorporate this amazing energy to our greatest good. Now, the decks I'm using for this reading are the Tarot de la Nuit and the Enchanted Oracle. Like always, there are links below to both these fantastic decks, so should they speak to you, you can go check them out for yourselves. So for this super moon reading, the selections I have are Jade, rose quartz, and then I have amethyst. Now I want you to quickly choose which crystal resonates with you the most right now. And then below in the description box I have a timestamp for all three of these amazing crystals. I want you to click on that correlating timestamp that'll take you straight to your reading and I will see you there. Hello and welcome my Jade friends. This reading is especially for you. Now like always, I have the full oracle and tarot deck so you get the fullest and most comprehensive reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the cards have to say. What does the full flower moon wish to share with my Jade friends? The King of Cups. Kings are that fully developed personality. The Cups, we have that emotion and intuition. The King of Cups is able to control his emotions so that he can see past that emotional uproar to the clearer answer. He has that control and he has those abilities to move himself forward no matter what's happening on the outside. Judgment, the 20th card in the Major Arcana, talks about the connection in, the connection to those higher vibrational beings, those messages, and the wisdom they share. Those messages and the wisdom they share with us. Between the King of Cups and Judgment, we're looking at the need for taming that emotional roller coaster that we're feeling. When we're able to tame that rocky energy that we're kind of being pushed around in, we're going to be able to receive those messages and that guidance we need to the pasture ahead. We're going to come from this kind of scary dark area into light and beauty. And that's what we want right now. Many of us are feeling that uncertainty and that roller coaster of energies that we're feeling globally. The full flower moon is really encouraging you to use your resiliencies, those strengths, those skills to start to control that inner anxiety and fear and being more open to those messages that are right in front of us. Yes, this is a very unsettling time. And yes, I've labeled it as a global tower situation. That doesn't mean that we just bury our heads. The full moon is encouraging us to take that control 
and to take those steps forward. If we sit in the same space with our head in the sand and stagnate our progression and growth, that's when the universe is going to start to throw the tower at us on an individual level as well. That growth, that shifting, that evolution is very necessary for us right now. What other wisdom and guidance can the full flower moon share with my jade friends? The Seven of Swords. Now, sevens are a challenge number, I won't lie. However, they're usually victorious. The Seven of Swords talks about puffing ourselves up, blowing ourselves out of proportion, and not being truthful to ourselves and to those around us on who we truly are. Part of this journey and realignment is that authentic self. We've put barriers and masks on so that people can't hurt us. Past situations have occurred that have put this shrubbery and boundary around us. So we're not able to shine bright. The Seven of Swords talks about that blowing up of ego, that misguidance of information, that trickery. We need to be honest with self and have that very truthful foundation so that we are able to gain those messages. We have a truthful foundation. We are li living a life of authenticity, which has a high vibrational energy to it. In that high vibrational energy, we find it easier to receive the messages and the guidance of those high vibrational beings. And it's in that guidance that's really going to bring us back and realign us with our soul's deeper purpose. Now we have the Knight of Cups. Knights are that adolescent, no fear energy. Usually portrayed as an adolescent male or a young male, I really enjoy the fact that this deck portrays it as a female. That adolescent no fear energy is really going to help us because let's be honest, we are looking at historical fear and heartache that is slowing us down. We need that no fear energy to take that on. We also need that intuition. We're starting to see a lot of intuitional cards. We've got the Knight, the King, and Judgment. We need to use our intuition to help guide us through some of these very thick bushes and thickets. Temperance. The 14th card in the Major Arcana talks about balance and energy flow. Very vital for us to moving forward. The more authentic we are, the more truthful we are about ourselves, the more balanced and grounded we'll be able to be because we have a better understanding of what grounding and energy needs we have. We're able to unblock our chakras, we're able to feel that connection with Gaia and also with that universe. We feel well supported and we have that energy to move forward onto those next pieces, to those next challenges and obstacles. The King of Wands. Brother to the King of Cups, of course. The King of Wands is about that courage and that determination. Like I said, we are looking at aspects and pieces that are rooted in fear and anxiety. Your ego is going to make them feel exorbitantly large. We need to use that inner fire, that 
encourage that determination, guided by your intuition, to overcome and slice through some of these deep-rooted fears. Okay, well we talked about him earlier, the tower. The 16th card in the Major Arcana talks about those sudden and unexpected shifts. This is a warning card. The more we are able to embrace our courage and our intuition and embrace that shift and realignment of our soul's deeper purpose, living that authentic self, the less we're going to see of the tower. Like I said, if we put our head in the sand, the tower is going to strike us in the butt. This is a time of evolution and shifting for us individually and as a species. Embracing this time and using it for our greater good. All right, let's end off on some blessings. What blessing does the full flower moon have for my jade friends. Sir Nonos talks about letting go. Some of us really need to let go of this thicket that's surrounding us. Letting go of that puffy fluffiness that isn't serving us. Releasing it, finding that energy flow and groundedness that's all around us so that we can live a more authentic self, a more balanced self. Love Spring Eternal, such a beautiful card and very much embraces that energy of the full flower moon. We have this energy, this beautiful, intrinsic, loving energy needs to be focused towards ourselves. That partnership with self, that understanding of self, that connection to our higher self is going to be essential as we go forward. Reinforcing and building on the relationship you have with yourself will allow new opportunities to come forward. We're literally seeing that intuitional skills start to bud and blossom, which then again reconnects us in to that guidance that we need. And then finally, Dark Enchantment. It's truly amazing how we start to talk ourselves into things. And I won't lie, that ego likes to really push things and entice us into choices that when we took that step back may not have been the best. Knowing that no matter what choices we've made, there is always light. There's always transformation. We have the ability at any time to shift our path, to return to the path of fulfillment and meaning. We would have been blessed and sometimes cursed with free choice. That free will gives us the opportunity now to make some better choices for us and our journey. I want to thank you guys so much for spending time with me today and watching my video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and that you're able to gain some insight and direction into what the full flower moon is offering you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest content. There is so much more amazing coming your way. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight and healing to subscribe to my channel 
and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page with many tiers and lots of perks. In some of the tiers, the perks are private readings and healings with myself. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my jade friends. Hello and welcome my Rose Quartz friends. This reading is especially for you. Now like always, I have the full oracle and of course the full tarot deck, so you get the most comprehensive and full reading for you. All right, without further ado, let's see what the cards have to say. What does the full flower moon bring for my rose quartz friends? What a beautiful card. Temperance, the 14th card in the Major Arcana, talks about balance and energy flow. And that balance is going to be very needed as we go forward into this year and as we overcome our global tower situation. And with her, the Nine of Wands. Nines are about all that we've achieved in our lives. That wand, that fire, that passion, that courage. The Nine of Wands talks about how we've had to overcome some pretty challenging aspects and situations in our lives. We've hit some pretty hard bumps. However, we've used that inner fire, that courage, that determination to not give up. The full flower moon is really encouraging you, my Rose Quartz friends, to embrace that balance and that courage so that you are able to take on this next challenge. Because this next challenge is going to take some time to overcome. We have a big mountain in our way and we need to figure out as an individual and also as a collective how we're going to overcome that. So this is the energy that the full flower moon is really encouraging us to embrace. These are the buds and emerging aspects that we need to focus in on. We can't change what's happening on the outside. We can only align ourselves and reinforce our inner skills and abilities to overcome these challenges to learn what we can and take that knowledge forward. What further wisdom and guidance does the full flower moon have for my rose quartz friends? I'm going to start off with the one that flipped face first. It's a seven of swords. Now, sevens are a challenge number. However, they're usually victorious. The sword is about truth and knowledge. The seven of swords talks about trying to get away with a little too much. That inflated ego something that we need to rebalance ourselves with and that's what we need to rebalance it's in this inflated energy that we need that rebalance we need to know what we can do and what we can't that authentic self is an easier structure and platform to work off of than something that is inflated Yes, we've been able to get away with it in the past, and it's been able to help us go forward. However, it's going to bring challenges with it because we're looking at a falsehood. 
We're not being truthful to ourselves and to those around us. The Wheel, also known as the Wheel of Fortune, the tenth card in the Major Arcana, and it talks about those seasonal shifts, those natural progressions. And we are very much in a natural progression. Humanity as a collective kind of needed a kick in the pants. We were veering very far off course. We have to readjust on an individual and a collective sense our purpose, our values, and where it is we're going. Like I said in past videos, in around 2032, we're looking at an energetical shift. We need to be prepared for that. Right now, the majority of humans aren't there yet. We need to keep going, using that inner fire, that courage to realign ourselves more fully, and I won't say fully, I said more fully, because we can't ensure that we're on our soul's deeper journey until later on. But we need to real, start realigning ourselves so we can build that very solid and practical foundation to start working off of that authentic self using our natural abilities, our natural gifts, and allowing them to really fuel us forward. We can't stop what's happening. However, we can embrace it and utilize this time to the greatest of our abilities. The Three of Pentacles. I love this card. So I always call this card the Triforce Perfecta. The Three of Pentacles talks about that partnership and need to work with those around us in our journey, overcoming those tasks and challenges that we're faced with. We were never put on this plane to do it alone. We've never been alone. Since conception, we've had our guardian angel by our side. We will never be alone. Sometimes we really struggle to hear and feel them. However, they are there. We need to work in cooperation and partnership, not only with those astral support systems, those high vibrational beings, but with their support system on this physical plane as well. When the three spheres work together in harmony, that's when amazing aspects occur, those miracles, those gifts. We're also not working harder than we need. We can ask for that support and guidance to go forward. So we can reserve some of our energies to allow those natural pieces to flourish. The Hanged Man the 12th card in the Major Arcana, that's that Let It Go card. One day someone is going to make the, the Hanged Man in the Frozen Olaf version. And I can't wait because I always hear that song now when I see this card. It's that quintessential, we need to let go. We cannot put our blinders on and be herded like cattle down the road by society. For generations, that's what's happened. We've put those very clear blinders on, we've inflated ourselves, and we have done what society thought was for the greater good. We never stopped to question. We never stopped to say, hey, is this okay? We, we have had pivotal moments in history where someone took the blinders off and did question. When we take the blinders off, we're allowing the universe to come in and guide us. Taking those reins and allowing those amazing aspects and possibilities that we've never dreamt of to come forward.
the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords has learned all her knowledge through some hard knocks. All her knowledge and wisdom comes from first-hand experience. And it's in that first-hand experience of being bumped and beaten around that she continues to stand up, embracing that sword of truth and knowledge, and knowing that in the heart of hearts, she is being her, the most authentic and true self she can be. And it's that energy that we need to embrace. And yes, we need that courage because being vulnerable is scary. We're taking off those blinders. We're releasing some of that false power that we've given those barriers and blocks from allowing people to see who we truly are. And in some cases, those barriers and blocks, those masks are so heavy that we've forgotten. We need to cut through some of that fluffiness to get to the heart of the matter, to get to who we truly are. We have that ability right now because we do have more time in the day to really focus in on what is going to be truly important for us. Let's go on to some blessings. What blessings can the full flower moon share with my rose quartz friends? Spirit of Yule. Now, Yule is an amazing time. It's a fire festival in the darkest of times. Now, Yule is celebrated on December 21st, which is around the winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year. We need to embrace this light in our time of need. We can't forget that there is always that light within us, that passion, that desire, and most importantly, hope. Embracing that no matter how dark things appear. Love spring eternal. Very much connected in to the full flower moon with those emerging aspects, those emerging pieces. We've got that spring eternal, and of course, with spring, we have that passion and love. This card talks about the importance of loving authentically and loving truly. We need to love ourselves and all that we're capable of so that we are able to embrace this time and shift, that we are able to rebalance ourselves and finding that aspect of authenticity. And then finally, Gothic Rose. Now, Gothic Rose talks about transition and shifting and changing. We've got this amazing moth behind her. Like the, the wheel here, we're looking at that evolutionary progression. Some of these progressions, these shifts and changes are happening overtly, and some are internal, and we may not even know it ourselves. Embracing this time of change with open arms of love, light, and hope. We know this is a time of change and we know this is needed for our greater good. It may feel hard and uncertain. Staying focused in that high vibrational energy of light and love will help this transition and progression to happen more smoothly. 
I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and watching my video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and that you're able to gain some insight and direction into what the full flower moon is offering you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest content. There is so much more coming your way, my friends. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing healing and insight is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page with many tiers and lots of perks. In some of the tiers, the perks are private readings and healings with myself. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Rose Quartz friends. Hello and welcome, my Amethyst friends. This reading is especially for you. Now, like always, I have the full tarot and oracle deck, so you get the fullest and most comprehensive reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the cards have to say. Woo! <laughs> Jumpers already. What does the full flower moon wish to share with my amethyst friends? So we had this card that almost hit the floor and jumped out right at the beginning. The Six of Wands. Now sixes are about balance and harmony. That wand, that inner fire, that passion. Now the Six of Wands talks about being victorious. When we use that inner fire, that courage, that determination and that passion to drive us forward, so we're going to see that victory. We're going to be able to achieve and overcome those obstacles. I'm not going to say with great ease. We may have to work at it. However, we will be victorious in overcoming and learning what we need to from this challenge. And with the Six of Wands, not really that surprising. The world. The 21st card in the Major Arcana. That ending and beginning card. The card that celebrates your achievements and starts to get you excited for those next adventures, those next aspects and pieces that we can look forward to. We are in a global tower situation. We know it's going to take a lot of courage a lot of determination to overcome some of the challenges we need to overcome on a global scale. On an individual scale, we may see that victory come forward quicker. Everybody is on an individual path. However, those paths crisscross and intertwine. We can't make people do or think things for what we perceive their greater good, they need to learn on their own accord. We, however, can take this wisdom, this balance, this harmony into our next chapter. Embracing those amazing aspects, learning from those opportunities presented to us. We can continue down our path of transformation and evolution and allow the collective to start to catch up. What the full flower moon is really encouraging you to do, my amethyst friends, is to bring in that balance, bring in your passions, so that you can overcome this challenge on an individual level and start to embrace those next pieces. Start to be excited for what is to come. We can't wallow in the low vibrations and the sadness and fear that is being projected globally. We need to embrace this nurturing and amazing moon and allow ourselves to continue on our evolution. 
for their guidance and wisdom does the full flower moon have for my amethyst friends? The Knight of Wands. I really appreciate how this deck has the knights as females. They usually, in other decks, depict the knight as an adolescent male or a young male. In this deck, they're young females because females still have that no fear energy. We still have that courage and determination. Really embracing that full moon, that divine feminine energy, and allowing it to ignite that inner power, that inner fire. We have a very warm center here. We need to keep going with that warmth and allowing that passion to burn bright. Not being afraid of those challenges because we know we're going to be victorious. Judgment, the 20th card in the Major Arcana. Talks about that connection to those higher beings, to the universe, giving us direction and wisdom. Taking us from this dark, ensnared situation, realigning us with that path of Realigning us with our soul's deeper journey, with that true purpose, that path that's going to bring us happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Part of what we need to do, some of this courage, is going to be embracing our intuition and our clairs, working with them to receive the guidance, that wisdom that has been available to us However, we've been struggling to receive and understand those messages. We need to know where to go. We might not understand it fully, but we need that nudge in the right direction. The Four of Wands. We're adding flame to flame, my friends. That passion, that stability within your courage within your passions, that celebration of all that we've achieved, embracing it and allowing it to give you that strength to move forward. Many of us are feeling really exhausted right now. We need to rejuvenate that flame, embracing that nurturing energy of the moon will help us to take that pause and breath which will invigorate us and allow us that extra oomph to go forward. I said intuition, I said my clairs, and there we go. We've got the High Priestess, the second card in the Major Arcana. The High Priestess is the most intuitive card in the deck. That intuition, those clairs are going to be essential, not only for that realignment, and most importantly, that understanding of self. The High Priestess holds the scroll, or usually it's a scroll, here it's shown as a book, called Torah, which is the universal wisdom. We need that guidance. We need that wisdom to guide us forward. We need that understanding to bring that meaning and fulfillment into our journey. The High Priestess not only has the scroll of universal knowledge, she has the keys to unlocking our understanding of self, to those hidden aspects, those hidden talents. We need to slow down 
and start to question and understand self, which is going to help unlock our clairs, which helps us receive and understand the messages from the higher vibrational beings, helps with that connection to the universe, which in turn, all of it helps to raise our vibration, our abilities to connect in, and our abilities to manifest. Then we have the Empress, the third card in the Major Arcana. You guys got a lot of Major Arcana here. We have one, two, three, four Major Arcana. The Empress talks about that divine feminine energy of fertility, abundance, and growth. Again, this card connects in nicely to the full flower moon that abundance, that growth, those emerging pieces that are coming through that will bring you even more abundance. These two divine feminine energies are like the yin and yang of the full moon. We need to incorporate both aspects, that very grounded, nurturing energy with that intuitive, creative energy combined it together in our lives and allow these different aspects that we're trying to create and nurture to thrive because the full flower moon is about your growth and this is exactly what we're looking at that connection in that amazing ability to create because when we start to get into our passions, it connects into our creativity and we're able to create abundance. We're able to create that joy and that harmony that we started out with. Let's end off on some blessings. What blessings does the full flower moon have for my amethyst friends. The Spirit of Yule. It may feel like a really weird card to pull in the middle of spring as we enter into summer. However, Yule is a fire festival in the darkest of days. The Yule season, which is 12 days, coincides with the winter equinox, the longest nights of the year. During that darkness, there is hope, love, and that light. We need to embrace that same mentality in what it is we're dealing with. I'm really seeing this like ensnared old root system. We need to embrace those hopes, those light and love energies to helping us see the path ahead. Tattered dreams. This card talks about that evolutionary shift. It goes back to that root system I'm seeing. There are pieces and aspects that aren't serving our greater good. You can see them here. They're the cobwebs. They're kind of clingy and sticky and slowing you down. We need to bring in that fire, the passion, to burn them away detangle ourselves, fill ourselves with that love, and allow our dreams to evolve and transform as we do. Just like anything in life, as we shift and change and as we grow older, perspectives, values, and goals change. That's very much what this card is talking about. 
how we do need to start to shift and change. Bewitching. This talks about how our ego can easily try and lead us down paths away from that soul's deeper purpose. We have the skills and abilities to stand up to our ego. Reflecting on and critically thinking about what it is we want to do and what we need to do to get there. The ego can't hold up to critical thinking because it's based in that low vibrational energy that wants to keep you in your box. But when you critically evaluate what's happening and why you were thinking about certain ideas or possibilities, you can weed out whether it is a shift away or a shift towards where it is you want to go. And it's those critical thinking pieces that we still need in play here. Because when you're looking at that high vibration, high vibrational energy can withstand some critical thinking. Now, we can't go to the other extreme where we're nitpicking everything apart. But when we look at that greater good and whether it brings you fulfillment and joy, that's going to be able to stand up to some critical thinking, some exploration. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and you're able to gain some insight and direction into what the full flower moon is offering you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest content. There is so much more amazing coming your way, my friends. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing healing and insight is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page with many tiers and lots of perks. In some of the tiers, the perks are private readings and healings with myself. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my amethyst friends.